When I talk about how buying property at foreclosure auction is one of the best ways to get cheap property, whether it be for investments or your personal house, it's because of this house. And I'm gonna talk about the numbers here. Uh, we just had a tenant move out on the first floor, so we're renovating and getting ready to rent. Those are the guys, we've bought hundreds of property at foreclosure auction, and we try to teach you from the mistakes we've made. So we'll talk about them a little bit here, but we appreciate a like or a comment. And if you have any questions, put those in the comments below and let's get to it. A little background, um, this is a two family house in Westfield, Massachusetts. We bought this a few years ago at foreclosure auction. The auctions actually happened right there, right on the uh, pavement right there. Um, historic moment. And this was a foreclosure auction. Uh, it has a two car garage. And now uh, when I showed up to the auction, I was the only one that had shown up. I got to walk on the outside because this is a uh, non-judicial state. So this happens at the property and it happens um, without actually court permission. So uh, you can see we have a couple of electric meters here, uh, property right there, beautiful brown property. Uh, and so when the auction, you know, when I got here, I just kind of walked around. You don't get access to it um, it's as is. I was able to kind of sneak around. It was vacant. So I was able to look through some of the windows and saw tons of trash. Also, I could see that from the outside, let me show you here. Um, as you can see, we put a brand new roof on the property, uh, but there was whole uh, there was holes in the roof right over there, and uh, you know obviously that just assumed that there was quite a bit of damage inside. So when I ran my numbers, we knew that an ARV, if it was all fixed up, was probably worth at that time around three hundred thousand, and we figured out oh, wow we're going to have to put significant work into it, you know the roof, the trash out, uh, we're assuming heating system, plumbing all that kind of stuff and uh, we came up with a rehab budget of around seventy thousand dollars and based on what we were comfortable having into the property we we're like all right we'll bid up to fifty thousand dollars so we we're like we were ready to bid up to fifty thousand dollars and now the auction uh, as i said took place the auctioneer showed up they had a witness for the auctioneer and they all kind of showed up and we we're waiting uh because it's on the hour and uh, no one else showed up, so they read the memorandum of sale. And just going in, checking on the unit. Um, so they read the memorandum of sale. Um, and uh, basically, um, after the memorandum of sale, uh, they announced the bid and the bid was 100. So me thinking, okay, $100,000, crap, that's over my minimum bid. So therefore I'm, or my maximum bid, so therefore I'm out. So I said, wow, I can't really, you know, do $100,000. Hey. Um, and so I basically kind of told them that that's, we're gonna have a no-go on that end. So uh, they're like, what do you mean? You can't bid a, over $100? You mean a hundred dollars? I was very flabbergasted. Hundred dollars? Um, well, yeah, hundred dollars. I'm like, uh, you gotta be kidding me. Um, and they kind of confirmed with the bank. They took all their time. This because they thought there was a mistake. Um, but no, it was a hundred dollar bid. So uh, I tried, of course, to bid a hundred and one dollars, uh, which they would not allow me to do. They said I had to do at least in the hundred dollar increments. I was a little disappointed. Um, so I reluctantly bid uh, $200 for this two family house that we were willing to bid 50 grand for. Um, and uh, clearly we were very happy. Um, but that was kind of the situation where we then uh, were pretty stoked uh, and getting this cheap property. And this has happened now, not necessarily $200, but we definitely got multiple properties for in the thousands of dollars, both out, you know, single digit thousands. Um, what happened more often than not uh, and uh, we just recently got a condo uh, for 26 grand that's worth you know north of 150,000. That needs very little work. So we were able to buy this property really cheap, which allowed us to come in and do what's what called a burr strategy. That's where we buy, buy cheap, uh, renovate, which we renovated this for less than our budget, which was $70,000. Um, we then rented out, which uh, we're turning over another rental, but we have also still the second floor rented. Uh, and then we basically came in and refinanced, or a cash out refinance, uh, typically is what it's called. And uh, we, because it appraised for just over 300,000, we were able to pull out more than our uh, money we had into it, uh, quite a bit more that we were able to pull out, tax-free by the way, uh, because it's a loan, it's not actual uh, capital gain. 
and that then we could put into another property, which is what we did. Now, a lot of people tell you the burr strategy is dead, that you can't do the burr strategy anymore, um, but that's not necessarily true uh, because one of the big caveats of buying the burr is buying it cheap. And if you can find properties for, on the cheap, then the burr strategy still works today. Um, but that's why we find that, you know, doing a foreclosure auctions is one of the best ways to still do the burr strategy um, because you can buy properties on the cheap. Now, I'm not saying all the properties you're gonna get for $200, um, but you can definitely find a lot of them that you can get for really cheap. And we're seeing a, you know, the foreclosure auction on the rise. And I'm even seeing, because we track the auctions all the time uh, in Mass and Connecticut, uh, and we're seeing um, quite a bit increase. Now it hasn't gotten back to the pre-COVID levels, but we're definitely seeing more and more um, you know, on the rise. Um, I'm even seeing even newer and newer um, mortgages like from 2021, 2020, 2022. Um, these people are even already foreclosed on. And these are some things that um, I think we're gonna see more and more, especially commercial. Uh, like we just bought the six family. We got it six for, uh, foreclosure auction, got that for 357. That could easily be another bird. Now we might choose a different route on this one because um, that's another bigger project that we just don't have the time for. We have so many projects right now. Uh, which is awesome I and mean, it's a good problem to have but uh, i think we're gonna have to look at possibly selling that to another investor which can most likely they can burn as well so that's kind of something we're working on right now and talking to a few different people and seeing what avenue we go or we have to just bring out another contractor and just do it in-house like we've done in the past so something i was talking about is also part of the renovations i highly recommend looking at you know getting you know new cabinets uh, we've been switching to granite this was one of our earlier renovations so we did put laminate but we're switching this stuff out and doing granite uh, we were able to get what's called a leathered granite, which we're definitely switching to for our apartments. It's more durable. It's also um, uh, easier to fix. So if there is like an issue when someone um, it gets a crack or they get a burn mark, something like that, they can actually fix it a lot easier. Um, so we're kind of shifting that. Um, one of the other things I always like to remember, we do a lot of LVP flooring, three piece caulkless tubs. Um, this was actually a one piece caulkless tub or uh, completely caulkless, it's just one piece. But wherever we can, we kind of try to do these durable um, fiberglass tubs in as much as possible. Um, low flow toilets, new vanities, low flow shower heads, you know, changing out the aerators and stuff, making sure they're low flow. These are really important um, as far as your rental property, but just wanna, you know, if you didn't already know, um, like I said, I love the LVP. Uh, we kind of standardized with this one uh, and it's uh, in all of our rental units now. So now if you have real quick, if you by chance don't have an electrician on staff or whatever, and you just need a quick uh, thing, we've also been doing these remote switches, which has been good, it's a little dusty, um, but you can do the real simple switches that you can do out. And it's just got a little receiver. Uh, we've got these on Amazon and they're about uh, 20 bucks. So nice, quick and easy. But just little tips that, uh, from some of our apartment rentals, because uh, ideally we get rid of pull chain. Some of these older houses have a lot of pull chain. Uh, also always looking for good um, replacement windows. We really like to get the lead. Uh, so that's a big issue with these older homes is lead paint. So one of the biggest things is uh, often with uh, lead in the windows. So we replace those with vinyl replacement windows. Um, these are just kind of the things that we try to do in all of our rental units to make them much better. And we standardize our paints, as you can see here. Um, and this way it's easier to come back in and do these quick repairs after someone moves out so that we can get it turned over and get it uh, upgraded. We also been switching, which I still gotta change this with a temporary lock, but we you know match it obviously. Um, but uh, we change uh, with a quick set. These cylinders actually pop out real easy so our guys can change locks real quick. So kind of real quick in conclusion, uh, my best uh, advice is definitely start learning about foreclosure auctions. I think we're going to see more and more of those happen. Um, and I think these are the, some great opportunities for people if you're looking for your own house. I mean, I bought my own house at foreclosure auction. Kevin bought his house at foreclosure auction. Um, but we've also bought a lot of our investment properties at foreclosure auction. And this is where you can still find really good deals. Um, now, you might have to go to a bunch of foreclosure auctions before you find a deal. And I think one of the other key that I want to mention is at foreclosure auctions, it's really important to know your numbers and stick to your numbers because that's where a lot of people get in trouble is they overbid and then they get in trouble. So if you actually stick to your numbers and then you'll never get hurt because you know what you know, um, have good people that you know can do the work for you, the contractors, you don't know it yourself. And 
really find it and make sure you know your uh, comps and if you have access to MLS or a realtor agent that can help really kind of guide you on that that's really important but stick to your numbers and you really can't get hurt uh, so I highly recommend checking out foreclosure auctions in your area learn about it if you want to learn more we definitely have a book on it foreclosure unlocked on Amazon uh, love to see you know hear your feedback on that what if you guys re read some of the stories or we have even more stories here too on our YouTube channel about different auctions that we've gone and what we've learned at these different auctions um, we try to teach you guys from not just our successes but also our mistakes so let me know what you guys think uh, comments below we'd love to hear from you guys and gals uh, and I uh, hope everyone has a great week thanks so much